3D printing is a hobby that has come up in the last few years and is kind of easy to get into, at least that's what pricing seems to suggest on really, really cheap 3D printers. Although there's the other camp where people suggest that well, you can't start uh, 3D printing with a 100 or 150 3D printer because they all suck. Well, today I want to prove that theory wrong because I bought this 3D printer, which is an LAGU Neptune 3 Pro, for 100 euros. Yes, that's right. As much as a 3D printer from AliExpress, that actually really sucks, so I wouldn't recommend that. But this one's actually really good. So are these misconceptions still the case or can you actually now buy really cheap 3D printers and start 3D printing even though you're a beginner? A short history of my 3D printing experience. I bought about five years ago an Ender 3, which also is coincidentally still available as a revised version, though I maybe would not recommend it. I don't know. I haven't had much, much experience with 3D printing in the last few years. So I'm kind of a really, really big noob at this because I did not have that great of an experience with the Ender 3. That may be the case because I tried to print ABS right away on a non-enclosed printer and I was just like, F this, I don't give a shit about this anymore because this does not work. Well, I should have tried some other materials instead. So because I didn't, I didn't have a 3D printer for about five years and now I got one again because I wanted to print some functional stuff. As I said, I don't have much experience in printing at all. Like I've tried to print like three or four models, that's it. In the shared office with my th friend, we have a Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon where he has printed a few things for me, which also didn't go smoothly all the time so um yeah but i have a bit of a comparison on print quality what that's like on the x1 carbon which is a i think a thousand euro upwards printer uh, with the ams it even is more expensive compared to this little guy you may be asking me how did you get this for 100 euros well that's pretty easy on the elegu website there is often there are some printers that are sold as refurbished and well you have to look out there and the last generation for example now the current one is the neptune 4 which goes from the neptune 4 to the ne neptune 4 max which is a relatively big print bed with 420 i think millimeters squared and uh, that's basically the newest generation and i got basically the last generation of these 3D printers and refurbished, so that was 100 euros. Plus shipping, of course, it's going to be more expensive, but still, it's really, really cheap. For that, you get everything you need as a beginner, I'd say. Of course, you can't print anything fancy like carbon fiber or nylon materials, or even ABS is kind of difficult without an enclosure but you can print the basics and for example for prototyping it's amazing what you can do with it even though like with the pro the build plate is kind of small um, you have to split up a lot of parts into multiple pieces especially if you want to print bigger things like automotive stuff like i do for example but it works for as a beginner this is basically perfect as it's not that expensive and that's why I'm saying you don't have to go into a like 500 euro plus uh, 3D printer to get started. It also has auto bed leveling, which works well. I didn't have any issues, um, though you have to adjust the total level of the bed uh, once you have leveled it on the uh, surface. But that's not that huge of a deal. I've done that in like two minutes uh, compared to the Ender 3, which took me like 15 minutes to correctly set up. So that's a bit easier. Of course, like a ex more expensive 3D printer has the capability of auto bed leveling. So it has, it can detect uh, the distance from the nozzle to the bed and can adjust accordingly and also adjust on the fly. So that's kind of handy. There are also some detections that newer printers or more expensive printers have. For example, a 
This has a filament run out uh, sensor, which I didn't plug in because I don't really need it or I forgot for this video, whatever it is there. But other predators like the Bamboo Lab have a uh, spaghetti sensor or whatever it's called. So it senses when, for example, a layer adhesion doesn't work properly and the printer just prints spaghetti all over the air. And that's what happened to me also. But that was because of my own stupidity, because I moved the object in the slicer slightly wrong and then it was basically floating and the printer couldn't handle that. Or the slicer handled it weirdly. I adjusted it a different way and it worked flawlessly. Of course, there is also differences in the printer itself. So for example, this is kind of a, as you call it, bed slinger printer. So the bed moves and the print head only moves in one or two axes. Whereas in the more expensive ones and the XY, XYZ printers, um, the printer head moves up, down, left, right, and front and rear. So that's a bit different. Uh, the objects on the print bed don't move around as much. So if you're printing uh, top heavy objects, the risk of them getting detached is not as great. This thing also, of course, has a heated bed as most printers do. Only the really, really cheap AliExpress ones don't, um, which is handy for more fancy filaments such as ASA or ABS, for example, which you can print if you use an enclosure or PETG or ASA, you even can print without an enclosure, although there is uh, the chance of warping if you do larger objects. And the print head does not utilize a full metal hot end. So you are going to be limited temperature wise to about 250 degrees. On PLA that is fine, but on other materials like ABS or ASA that can lead to problems and you may need to get an all metal hot end for this, which can set you back, back about I think 30 to 50 bucks depending on what model you get. But that would be an upgrade that you can do and might be worth looking at. Setting up the printer is actually very easy. It's only a few bolts and plugging in this wire or this harness uh, into the printer itself and into the print head and that's all done. I had a little issue with the printer. It wouldn't, uh, the filament wouldn't extrude. So I wrote Elegoo an email. They replied very fast. So their support is great. They sent out a new print head as well as a new harness and we solved the problem without any issues. Well, shipping took a few weeks because the parts came from China, but that's what you get with a cheap 3D printer. They are made in China or at least the, they don't have uh, parts stocked locally over the world. But as I said, not a huge deal. Apart from that, I have run this printer a whole week continuously without any issues. So I have printed a few things that actually work pretty well. I'm going to show you some footage of that. Uh, these prints turned out very nice. So even like overhangs with supports and, su and stuff, they work very, very well. I didn't have any issues except from one print failing, as I said, while because I oriented it wrong. Would I recommend this printer for a beginner? Absolutely. But with an asterisk, you have to make sure or you can't print any fancy materials. So if you do like automotive stuff and other things, then you have to look out for what materials you are printing. You can't print anything that's like 200 degrees Celsius uh, stable. So like uh, the, the these fancy plastics that can withstand a lot of temperature. Um, but on the other hand, for example, ASA or ABS are able to withstand upwards of around 100 degrees Celsius, which might be enough for even that and they are you pretty uv resistant so you shouldn't have an issue even with that also there is some troubleshooting and some setup required sometimes this is not a setup and let let it print for like half a year type of machine you can have if you use it over prolonged times you can have wear on the rubber rollers because they are not made of any wear resistant metal the uh, belts might have uh, wear or they might have stretching over time, but you can adjust that pretty easily with those thumb screws here. And so that's made pretty easy to get the best print quality out there, but you have to 
do some things yourself. As in other things, you get this little display on which you manage pretty much everything from printing, from monitoring your print. You can also attach this uh, printer via USB to get it directly printing from your PC or use an SD card, such as you're used to with other cheap printers. In my opinion, uh, per USB would be the easiest as you can just click uh, print, but choose whatever you want. As for noise, the printer obviously isn't silent as no 3D printer really is. Speed is not very fast as you can see right next to me I am printing currently some boost leak testers and it's really not that fast it takes quite a long time but that's what you expect from a cheaper 3D printer it's not going to be the same speed as a bamboo lab for example but that's obviously uh, the cost of buying a cheap printer you're going to have to um, wait a little longer for your finished products that's it from me I hope you liked this video if you did, give it a like and uh, subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, I wish you a nice day and good.